The FMS Zero is the best Warbird trainer. Forget the T28. This Warbird is floaty and easy to fly, even for someone like our buddy Kieran, who's had no Warbird experience at all. I'm gonna do my camera warm ups. It's super stable too, and not prone to stalling out easily, but we'll get to that in a bit after we get through the super aggravating assembly. This is obviously an older FMS design that hasn't been updated to make it easier to get the wings on. Connecting the wings to the receiver is a mess of wiring that's infuriating to deal with at the field. You'll want to leave the wings on, trust me on this. The tailwheel on ours had some kind of jam that kept it from rotating left, so naturally this stripped the awful plastic servo that FMS used for the rudder. You may have to rotate the tailwheel manually for a bit before it'll free up, but it will eventually loosen up. There is literally no good reason why there's a plastic geared servo controlling the tailwheel and rudder simultaneously. Invest in a metal servo and replace it. It's not if it'll strip, it's when. Those are the major issues that we had with the Zero. Now, let's talk about how it flies. For newer pilots, the real hang-up is going to come from it being a tail dragger because these are more intrinsically difficult to fly in general. It consistently pulls to the left on takeoff. If you're not used to P-Factor, that's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. Use right rudder on takeoff to counter it. The Zero's takeoff tendencies are identical to other larger aircraft, so this behavior makes it ideal for moving up to bigger and better aircraft. Takeoff becomes routine when you get used to it, and the left drift that you'll notice on takeoff is much less severe on grass, so as a newer pilot you may wish to stick with flying off of grass. The innate instability of a tail dragger on the ground means that you'll need to learn how to land it on pavement. It'll be more forgiving on grass, so you won't have to work the rudder as much. If you're not used to this, the Zero is a great trainer for tail dragging. It's not too hard to land, but it is hard to land in a straight line. Keep the tail from getting outside of the main wheels, and it'll track pretty straight. Let it get too loose, and it'll ground loop on you. If you're new to warbirds or tail draggers in general, you'll have to practice at this for a bit, but every landing that you do will help you get better, and eventually you'll get to a point where it's super easy. One of the best ways to improve your landings with any airplane is consistent touch and go practice. Spend a battery or two nailing landing after landing, and keep at it until you can do it without thinking about it. For being as nose heavy as it is, Zero can be landed by a pilot with no Warbird experience like Kieran. John just made it look so easy, I had to give it a go myself. <laughs> I didn't have to think about that. <laughs> Enemy spotted. You know that guy who's always itching to say, it doesn't need a gyro. He's right for once, but nobody ever seems to explain why. So listen to our aeronautical engineer, Kieran, explain it for you. Because it is nose heavy. Show all your viewers where that's at. Oh my God, yeah. That's severely nose heavy. So the tail is able to counteract any unwanted pitch movement. So you don't need a gyro to do the same thing for you. But if it was tail heavy, the tail wouldn't be able to keep up, and so you'd need some extra help from the gyro. The way this plane is set up, I don't think it really needs a gyro at all. I can see why people would say it doesn't need one, but this just lends more credence to my theory that the nose heavier a plane is, the less a gyro is actually... Well, if you set the system up to be inherently stable, you're not going to need artificial stabilization on it. The FMS Zero is super nose heavy. This is one of the most nose heavy models that I've ever flown. And while that limits it from being extremely agile, as FMS claims, it does mean that it's so stable without a gyro that there's really no point in even adding one at all unless you really just need something to counter wing rock from turbulence. 
To its credit, it actually flies pretty well for having a super nose-heavy center of gravity. Nose-heavy doesn't always mean bad, sometimes it just means that it introduces positive stability and makes it basically unnecessary to use a gyro at all. But use one if you want to, just be aware that you'll have to crank the pitch gains up significantly to actually see any effect. It's agile in the way that most people expect it to be, so to be fair to FMS, their advertisement isn't false, but calling it extremely agile is not accurate. It can't flat spin. No, that's the furthest, that's so nose heavy, it's the furthest thing from a flat spin. It has a very ineffective rudder and knife edge. And the nose gets dragged around in tumble attempts. Other warbirds that I've flown aren't this stable. This makes it excellent for newer pilots or pilots who are new to warbirds. This is the precise kind of trainer-like stability that you'd expect from something like the T-28. If you go into it expecting this, it should be a ton of fun to fly and help build your skills up to fly bigger and better airframes. There's only one place to put the battery without modifying it and the SMC 2800 battery is about as light as it gets. This is the Warbird that you'll want to get if you're new to flying Warbirds. It's predictable and easy to fly, and it's not prone to accelerated stalls. If you've got some experience flying, this is a solid choice to step up to bigger and better airframes. It should be docile and fun for almost anyone. But I definitely recommend this one more as a Warbird trainer. You're not going to be able to ring it out like you could with something else, and that's okay. Not every plane has to be bonkers to be enjoyable and fun. With that in mind, I'm giving it a solid 8 out of 10. The rudder servo stripping and the messy and assembly both drop two full points off of the score. If you want a replacement rudder servo recommendation, check the link in the description. You can get 10% off of your first order using the code REFERRAL2BROSRC or $10 off using the code 2 RC. Join us on Discord and share your flying with us. We're always active and willing to help with any questions that you've got. So don't hesitate to pop in and ask questions about setup or just hang out and meet some like-minded friends of the channel. We'd love to have you around. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Gyro off. No one's ever said those two words before on this channel. <laughs>